I briefly mentioned in the last couple of videos what kind of frequencies of sound we can hear, we humans can hear. And our lower frequency is at 20, so our low frequency, which means low pitch, is about, limit is about 20 hertz, and our high frequency limit is about 20,000 hertz. So we can hear a range, anything in between 20 and 20,000 hertz. And if you remember from the cochlea video, two videos back, I said that the ear, when the ear um, drum moves and the ossicles move, that vibrates the bones, and then eventually, obviously, the liquid is vibrated, so the, the liquid is pushed inside the cochlea, but how far it travels determines what kind of pitch we hear. So if, the, if we have a high-frequency pitch, high-frequency sound, a high-frequency sound will only move the water a slight bit. High frequency is small push, whereas low frequency means a large push. And that's important because so low frequency is large push. So if we have a high frequency, that means this water only gets pushed a bit. And that means only a certain amount of hair cells get activated. And that would tell us that we have a high pitch sound. Whereas if we have a low frequency, that means a large push. So that means that actual water will travel further with the cochlea and it will activate more hair cells and that means we have a our brain will know it's a low frequency and low pitch sound right so we have these um, different types of frequencies we can pick up between 20, 20 and 20,000 that's humans and obviously the structure and the way that the cochlea functions allows us to do this but the reason why I mention this is because dot point says students will process information from secondary sources to outline the range of frequencies detected by humans as sound and compare this range with two other mammals discussing possible reasons for the difference identified. So a couple things we do. Um, the ones I've chosen here are the dolphin, oops, the dolphin and the bat. And remember, even though the bat looks like a bird, it's not a bird, it's a mammal. Right? And even though the dolphin looks like a fish, it's not a fish, it's also a mammal. So both these are ma examples of mammals. So we've talked, we'll talk about dolphins and mammals. And what we have to do is we have to know their frequencies. Right? So I'll talk about those. But remember the human frequency as well. So our range is between 20 and 20,000. And with what we do, we have to, we have to, we have to compare those frequencies. So we have to compare them to the ones of the dolphin and the bat. And also we have to identify or discuss reasons why they might be different. So why do we have 20 to 20,000 and why do the dolphins and bats have different frequencies? Um, so that's what we have to do in this video. All right, so we'll talk with, about the dolphin. So remember our frequency, humans, we had 20 to 20,000 hertz. And one thing that will pop out is that dolphins have a very different type of frequency. First of all, they can hear a lower range than we can, 0.25 as opposed to 20, that's our limit, their limit is 0.25, and they can hear a much higher frequency as well, so their frequency in terms of upper limit is a lot higher, so it's 150,000 as opposed to our 20,000, it's a lot higher. Now, that's one thing, so you should actually know those numbers, that's, you don't have to remember too many numbers in the course, in this course, the bio course, but these are the numbers you do have to remember. So for the dolphin, it's a lot higher, it's 0.25 to 250,000. And next part was discuss possible reasons why there might be differences. So we humans, we obviously have really good eyesight and we use our eyesight for a lot of things. So humans have eyesight, which means we often rely not only on, on a hearing, but also on eyesight to be able to find prey, so be able to find you know animals that we could eat back in the day, like back when we were still hunting, um, or that we could speak with each other using not not only our hearing but other you know body language and all that kind of stuff. So our eyesight is important, and that means that our hearing is often maybe pushed to the side a bit, even though it's still very good. It's not as good as maybe some other animals do have. Because a dolphin, for example, is in water, right? So in water, you can if you've been in dark water, in the ocean water, you can't see very far. So water means you often get lots of darkness. So obviously you can't rely, a dolphin can't rely purely on his sight to be able to see prey and communicate with other people. So they will have to use something else. And that something else is a really good hearing. So very high frequencies and very low frequencies. The reason why I use this high frequencies, this is where the 150,000 comes into play. This is something called echolocation. So it's going to try to sound for echoes. 
this is the high frequency, right? So it will produce high frequency sound waves. High frequency just means you're going to have lots of these really close together. Well, it's sound waves, it's high frequency. And you can see it is producing these high frequency sound waves. Then if it hits, for example, some fish, those frequencies will rebounce, they bounce back. So they will return, they will return to the fish. And now the, 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 it receives these, this information, the dolphin receives this information. And now it knows roughly how far away those fish are. So it can use the time in between. So let's say this took one second to get there and then it took one second back. And this information the dolphin can use to figure out how far away these fish are and maybe where those fish are as well. All right, so all that information will be sent to the dolphin and it can interpret that, that information. Right, we don't rely on echolocation because we can just see stuff. But a bird, for example, um, it's, you know, it's water, it's dark water. It can't see as far, so it's going to use echolocation, which is why it needs to have a really high frequency. Because without the, with our frequencies, we wouldn't be able to produce echolocation. It needs to have really high frequencies for echolocation. Right? So that was one reason why it might have a different range than we do. Another one is that it has to communicate over very long distances. Sound can travel underwater and it can travel a long distance, especially if it's low frequency. I remember we said low frequency travels further. So a low frequency travels further. And if you look at the range of a dolphin, it actually has a, a range which is lower than ours. It has a range of 0 0.5. 2.5 as opposed to R20. Right? So this is where the low frequency comes in play. It's the 0 0.25 limit, that's as low as it gets. Because for example, if there's a different dolphin, so let's say there's a dolphin really far away, it wants to be able to communicate that with maybe, it could be kilometers away. Um, it's going to use a low frequency, which means, low frequency means that the gaps between them are quite far. But this means that it also travels further, right? So it will use low frequency sound waves to communicate between different people, different species, different members of, of the dolphin species. All right, so two reasons, possible reasons why it's different. It has a higher upper limit because it wants to use echolocation to be able to find its prey, to be able to find its food. And it wants to have a lower limit as well. So it has a lower limit than ours because lower frequencies travel further. And that means it can travel, it can communicate with dolphins all around the ocean, quite far distances. All right, so it has both lower, um, lower limit and, sorry, a yeah, lower lower limit and, and a higher upper limit because both those are useful for the dolphin in its everyday life. That was one mammal. The other mammal is the bat. And if you look at the actual frequencies of the bat, again, ours is 20 to 20,000. So we actually have a lower lower limit, but they have a much higher upper limit. And this is again due to echo location. If you think about a bat, when is a bat hunt? A bat hunts at night. Right? So bats are up at night. And our vision at night is not very good. We can't see very far during the night. So, so, and the bat is often blind, it can't see at all. So it obviously can't rely on its vision on its vision to be able to see animals. But if it can use echolocation, just like the dolphin did, it can also be able to find and kill prey, right? So it will send out these high frequency waves. They will bounce off, come back to the bat. And depending on the time it took and where they came from, it will tell the actual bat where their prey is. So where their food is, and then it will hunt them. So it uses these higher frequencies of 120,000 compared to our 20,000 to be able to find prey, to find food, and it does so through something called echolocation. Um, so I quickly covered up one again. It says outline the range of the frequencies detected by humans as sound. Right, so we need to know all those numbers. So 20 to 20,000 for humans, 0.25 to 150,000 for bats, sorry, for dolphins, and 1,000 to 120,000 for um, for bats and then you need to know possible reasons why they might be different so humans don't have hearing as their most important um, as their only and most important sense they have sight which is really well developed so in our case we kind of got lazy with hearing we just focus a bit more on our sight whereas the, both the dolphin and the bat rely a lot on hearing the dolphin lives in water which means it's often dark it can't see far and the actual bat lives in a, hunts the dark in the dark so it can't see far either so they both use echolocation, which is why they have higher frequencies. The dolphin has 150,000, the bat has 120,000. Those high frequencies allow it to do echolocation, which is just the idea that you have your echo, you hit a your prey, it will bounce back, and that all that information 
on time it took, the place where the echo came back from, all that could be used by both the bat and dolphin to be able to find its prey. And on top of that, the actual dolphin also has a lower, lower limit, which means it has lower frequency sounds it can produce. And here, and that's because it wants to be able to communicate maybe with dolphins far away. So it needs to be able to hear anything that comes from that dolphin. And low frequency travels further than high frequency. So the lower frequency can produce, the higher an ant can hear, so produce ant can hear, um, the more it can communicate with people or members of its own species from far away. I hope that was useful.